And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Allah is with men. <laughs> is now with us on earth. What did Jesus say? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done where? On earth as it is in heaven. This is what he just said in Revelation chapter 21. What did he just say? Chapter 21, 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Allah is with man. The kingdom has come down to earth. And he shall dwell with them. And they shall be his people. And Allah himself shall be with them. And they shall be what? And shall be their creator. In the Holy Quran it tells us this is to expect this. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Allah shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. Because remember, death is sin. The fear of death is sin. There'll be no more dying, nothing but eternal life, which you originally had in the garden until you partook of the fruit of which you were forbidden to eat, of which you would have received if you would have received Jesus, the Messiah, but you didn't. You would have regained eternal life again, but you didn't. You turned away from him and worshipped everything but him, turned him into a god, turned him into the god. First it was a god, then he became the god. I'm going to show you exactly where in the scripture they pulled that trick on you in a little while. What was that? Well, you're four. finishing four. You're four, okay. Neither sorrow you have to. Let me start at four again. For Allah shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. All those physical things will be gone. The transformation is taking place from mortal to immortality. From beings to supreme beings, this is what he's saying. Number five, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, what? I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. John, write these things down, because this is going to happen. And that's why he got this book. And he said unto me, It is done. I am the first and the last. I was here in the beginning, and I am here at the end. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountains of the water of life freely. We call it Kothar in the Quran. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his creator, and he shall be my son. That's what Jesus said. As many as believe on me, them too, I give the power to become the sons of God. You see? You're going to end up a son of God anyway, if you have faith. But the fearful, now let's talk about those other people. But the fearful, those people who are afraid to make that first step, I'm coming home one day, I'm getting together. The fearful, the unbelieving, those who conceal the truth, knowing, because these were cast the rule here, they hide what they really are. And the abominable, and the murderers, and the warmongers, and those sorcerers like that bar of Jesus, and idol worshippers like the Catholics who got statues all over the church and then say they're not worshipable. And a lot of Muslims are now idol worshippers because they're now worshipping Muhammad and his Sahaba and the Khulufa. They're worshipping. They're not respecting. It's a difference. To become an idol worshiper is not even intended to because of the spread of false Islam by the hypocrites, which is referred to in the Quran as Al Arab, the fake Arabs. Idolers and liars. It tells you the Quran about those who lie about the deen. Shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is what? That is the second death. They're going to go there eternally with him. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, that means of the seven archangels, which had the seven vows, full of the seven last plagues, the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come up, come up to the ship. Come up, come hither. I shall show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. He's going to take John into the mothership 
and show John the mothership, the new city, the crystal city, the Bible calls it. it says, come on up here, I want to show you something. I'm going to show you Jesus' wife because people were looking for something else. Number 10, and he carried me away in the spirit, took me out of my body to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem descending, coming down out of heaven from Allah. That's what your Close Encounter movie is about. The so-called Close Encounter UFOs, they try to make it out of a myth. They're talking about another abode descending, where two abodes mixed together, the earthly abode and the heavenly abode. Malakut and Nasut merging into one. Number 11, having the glory of Allah and her light was like unto the stone most precious. It will go on and describe to you the city, the length, the breadth, and everything about it, which I won't go into in this book. Then it goes on in 27 of the same 21, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, that defiles. If you are pork eating, alcohol drinking, cigarettes smoking, if you are defiled, you will not enter into the city. So don't let nobody tell you you can do it and live in sin because you're not. Neither whatsoever worketh abominations or maketh the lie, but they which are written in the what? Lamb's book of life. Those are the only ones getting in there. Your name is in that book. If not, you're not getting in. And if we went on to 22 of Revelation, which is kind of difficult because my voice is going, I'm tired, it would get even more explicit about the end of the world. Now, what I was telling you about is how they made the name, the blasphemous name, of Jesus. Now you say, what? The blasphemous name of Jesus? Yes. Turn to the book of Luke 427. They're going to take and change the name of Elijah and they're going to add the name Zeus in it. Right in the Bible. Go ahead. And many lepers were in Israel in that time of Elijah. Many lepers lived in, in Israel at the time of Elisha, which is another name for Elijah. The prophet. And none of them were cleansed, saving Naaman and Syrian. And, and all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. Do you see the name? Now go back to 25 and watch the name. But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of, Elias. who's that? Elias. Elias. You see that name Elias? Mm -hmm. When the heavens were shut up three years and six months, when great famines was throughout all the lands. Now they're going to take the same name and change it. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarphaphus, the city of Sidon which were leopards, of course, they were Canaanites, unto a woman that was a widow. Now, and many leopards were in Israel in the time of, you notice they've added Zeus now? S-E-U-S? -E mm -hmm. Eli and then Zeus? Right. The same way they did with Jah and Zeus and came up with Jesus. These are the blasphemous names they're using. Rather than to use his name, Yeshua, or Isa, or Elijah, they've changed the name and added a Greek god Zeus right in the Bible, right in front of you. Can you see it? Yeah, it's right there. That's frightening that they've played these many games. But I guess it's not important because this guy, Luke, wasn't really one of Jesus' disciples anyway. <laughs> Go ahead. I wanted to know what the word Quibla means. It's spelled here Q-I-B-L-A-H. The word Qibla has the word acceptance in it, which is the accepted direction. Okay? Okay. Um, well, I was looking at 143 and 44 in the first, is it the second surah? The first surah. Second. Second surah. 
And can you tell me what this means? And the question is stemming from which part? It's standing, well, what I, I guess what I'm asking is, I thought Quibla was a way of life or... Oh, no. Okay, this section of the Holy Quran, it starts off by saying there are certain people who are fools. They use the word in there, Tasfa'aha. Right? They mm -hmm. are fools, men and nurse, from the people. Mm -hmm. And these people, what do they say about them? They will say to you, they're speaking to Muhammad, what is it, Muhammad? Not who is it now, but what is it, Muhammad, that have made you change your face from facing the masjid in Aqsa, Aqsa of Jerusalem, to Mecca? You see, because they didn't believe that Rasulullah Muhammad was receiving revelations from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember the so-called Jews of his time, which were not the originals, but the so-called Jews in Medina of Muhammad's time opposed him. Though their elders, the Quran says, knew that he was the uh, Ahmed mentioned in their scripture. Right? So they asked him, what is it? And notice the law calls them fools. <laughs> They'll ask you, what has turned you from their Qibla? Their Qibla was Jerusalem. Say, to Allah belongs the east and the west. They were speaking from Mecca, so they were pointing westwardly and eastwardly. You see what I'm saying? Most Muslims translate this to mean everything, be it east or west, belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for salah. Therefore, you can pray in any direction. No. If you were in China, you'd be facing west. If you were in India, you'd be facing north. And if you were in Jordan, you'd be facing south. And if you was in the right place, the west, you'd be facing the east. You follow? Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was showing his divinity by this quote that he does not look from a horizontal standpoint of view, but rather from a vertical standpoint of view. He looks at the world from all sides, not from the world in one direction or the other. So they told Rasulullah that the east and the west belongs to the Lord. That's the same thing as if I started at a masjid with my feet towards the Qibla, the Muslim would say, it's not sunnah for a Muslim to sit there with his feet facing the Qibla. Right? Mm -hmm. And then I would say, why? And they'd say, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in that direction. And I'd say, well, please, face my feet in some direction that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't. So I'll know where to build my bathroom. And they would laugh and say, this is impossible, because there's no direction you can turn where Allah isn't. Then I'd say, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And that's exactly what he was talking about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have a direction. But he has given me and you a direction, and the direction that he has given me and you is a certain place and a certain object. Why did he give us an object, the Kaaba? Because the Kaaba is a square, 40 by 40. Make note that the Prophet Musa والسلام, received his revelation at the age of 40. And so did Rasulullah receive the Holy Quran in the year 610, being born 570, would make it 40 years also. 40 by 40. Alright? Okay. Now, we're looking at a cube-shaped building, which people make a circular around. So we have a square and a circle. The foundation of the creation of the whole universe. You understand? Mm -hmm. The tree is what's sitting where Kaaba is right now, where Shaitan tempted Hawa. So when Muslims go to Mecca to run around the tree and not be tempted by it, by running around it, bickering and doing tour to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they make the 360 degree circle around the 360 degree square, which is the 360 degrees of information that comes from the galactic heavens and the 360 degrees of information that's here on the planet Earth through the scriptures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then they kiss the black stone, black is the word here, because it's the remaining portion of the clay which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shaped the body of Adam in and Eve from in the land of Puti, where the junction of the two Niles are in Sudan. And they kiss the, the black stone as a symbol of Adam, their mother and father. Now make note that Allah has draped the Kaaba in a certain color. What color? Black. The Kaaba in Mecca is draped in black cloth, which 
which means it symbolizes a tent. Which tent does it symbolize? Psalms of Solomon tells us, I am black but comely, O you daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedar. In Islam today, the so-called Arab bears witness to his history that the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, was of the tribe of Quraysh, who were from the Hashemi, who came out of Ishmael, Abraham, through their son, Kedar. And that Abraham and Ishmael are the ones who re-erected the Kaaba in Mecca, around the spot where Hajar and Ismail was. And Hajar, as we know, was a black Mizramite or Egyptian. Okay, so therefore, the descendants that were in Paran or Bathsheba, as well as what's called today Mecca, Paran, were descendants from Ishmael, who was the son of a Chaldean black man named Abraham, and Hagar, who was an Egyptian black woman, daughter of Abhaptek, Ahmed. And we find that the Rasulullah Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, came out of their descendants, meaning that he was black. So the Kaaba is draped in the tents of Kedah. And Muslims the whole world go there and bear witness to the tents of Kedar in Mecca. White Arabs, red Arabs, green Arabs, purple, stock, juice, and plaid bear witness that Rasulullah's descendancy, which they refer to in the third chapter of the Holy Quran as Ali Imran, Allah has selected them above other people of the world. The Quran makes that statement, not me, that Allah took Imran's family and made them above other people. Yet Muslims persist on saying there is no race domination. That you read the Holy Quran, the third chapter, and Allah says He had chosen Ali Imran's family and Moses' family above other people. That is a form of racism or partial decisions. He makes mention of the tribe again by the name, by calling it Le'ila fi Quraysh. That He sends thousands of blessings and protections for the tribe of the Quraysh, which was the tribe changed their name from Hashemi, which were descendants of Kedar. So it's telling us in the section of the Quraysh that we are to do what? We are to worship at a specific place. Where is that place that Allah is talking about? Somebody tell me. It's up by the east, is that, or the mosque? Where? I just got to screaming and yelling and trying to tell you where. <laughs> Where did he tell us to pray? In the Surah Al Quraysh. Does anybody know? Open your Quran to the 106th chapter. Oh, Mecca. You're more to say. This is a Meccan Surah. And it was originally revealed as 95. Presently, it's 106. What does it say? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. What is that? Begin all things with the illustrious name of Allah, the Yielder, most merciful. But thousands of protections should go out to the Quraysh tribe. Their protections, thousands of them, are they rahla mount their horses to go forth in the winter. Allah Ta'ala is summoning everybody's attention in this chapter to a specific tribe of people who resided in Arabia at a specific time who were known to travel in every direction in the world in the winter and the summer because the environment they were in did not have the provisions necessary for their sustenance. The Ila fi Quraysh, Ila fi Himrah, let us shut up the site, but Yabudu Rabbah had a bait. 
is the word I'm trying to come to. He tells them the house they were talking about was none other than the Kaaba. The same house erected or re-erected by Abraham and Ismail, which symbolizes the tribe of Kedar, the black tents. So Muslims was told in the Quran to face the Qibla in Mecca, and Rasulullah was being told that if he does, he'll know which of those so-called hypocrite Jews and hypocrite Christians that we refer to them now in translation was with him when he tells them that Allah has called because many of them in Medina because of his power and domination joined up with him but they weren't really with him. They didn't really have faith in Allah and his apostle Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. They just said they were. And he said, we'll find out Muhammad who's with you when we tell them to face Mecca and not Jerusalem. And many of the so-called Yahudi turned in the other direction. This is the section that you're reading. And it says, you people will be a bear witness of those who are with you. And Muhammad is going to be a bear witness of